it's now made it a one-point ball game. We're going to take a break. 7.43 to go in this first half. Iowa by one. North Carolina, after losing Thursday to Georgetown in East Rutherford, had a tough trip here to Iowa City. All their luggage was lost. They finally got their uniforms today, but could not work out last night in their arrival here in the state of Iowa. And right now, the Hawkeyes with a one-point lead, 7.41 to go in the first half. This is Troy Skinner out of Palmer, Iowa. He's a sophomore. A.C. Earl out of Moline, Illinois. I tell you, leads are not going to mean anything in this game, Gary. Both of these teams have the ability to come back when they're down. Both have great pressing ability. The seven-footer, Les Jepson, hitting. He has six points. He's vastly improved this year. 25-22, the Hawkeyes, they throw it away. That's been what's happening. They're forcing him into those errant passes. But stolen nicely by Rick Fox. Out to King Rice. Rice had a very tough night Thursday against Georgetown. In fact, the entire backcourt did. And there it goes to Williams. Kevin Madden will reload it. Kevin Madden, he did not shoot well. He was one of nine against Georgetown. Now has four points in this game. Well, he's trying to adjust to the perimeter, Gary, and he's he's really a power forward body. 6'6", 227. Great moves inside, but he's got to get into the flow outside. Here's the second leading score in the history of the state of Iowa hitting a three-pointer, Troy Skinner. He averaged over 36 points a game in high school. He's been struggling, shooting miserably. Only 18%, but he hit that one. Well, he's been doing a good job defensively. And look at uh, Jepson on the point of this press. Boy, what an obstacle he makes throwing that ball inbounds. He inherits that job from Brad Lojas, who did it so many years for Iowa. Here's Fox on the drive. A.C. Earl had a piece of it. Fox comes back with it. Four-point lead for the Hawkeyes. That goes out of bounds. It'll be Carolina's ball substitutions now for Iowa and Iowa will substitute all game long this is Ingram 45 also Ray Thompson coming in in the game Thursday against Iowa State Tom Davis made 40 substitutions well, I tell you Dean Smith will make a few also Gary so this may set a record there today they shuttle them around and with that pressing defense they got to rest everybody up for a long time Dean Smith has allowed his players to take themselves out and get a rest and I understand that uh, Tom Davis does the same thing They'll just point to themselves and come out of the game. Kevin Madden able to hit the last four points now for Carolina. Cuts it to two. Six points for Kevin Madden. Here's Ray Thompson, who really played outstandingly well against Iowa State Thursday. He already has one three-pointer in this first half. He's not afraid to put it up from out there. Out of Summit, Illinois, a sophomore in the move, and he gets another two. Long arms and six foot five. Oh, what a, what a fine player. He's, he can put it on the floor. He can score inside and outside, and his defense in this press is tremendous. 30-26, Madden again. Good defense by A.C. Earl. Out it comes to Skinner. To Moses, very creative out of Carson, California. Ball not making the mark, and it's going to be Iowa's basketball. Moses is not shy about putting that shot up. He is a scorer, and uh, Coach Davis says that he's going to come around and be a good one for him. He's averaging 14 and a half points a game. You saw A.C. Earl sit down at Brick Tubbs. Number 43 is checked in. There he is, Dr. Tom Davis, in his fourth year as head coach. Big challenge this year, replacing that outstanding trio of D.J. Armstrong, Ed Horton, and Roy Marble. 64% of his offense from a year ago. Gary, check out that tape job on Ingram's leg, number 45. That's going to be off of Carolina again. Substitution now, George Lynch will check back in for the Tar Heels. There's the leg you're talking about. Very unusual wrapping. Well, he's had a lot of knee problems, but uh, he hangs in there. He's got a brace in under that wrapping, and I, I don't think I've ever seen one quite mummified like that. That's what it looks like. He says it keeps it warmer, but some of it's psychological as well. In it comes Thompson. Thompson gets it away. It's hard to block the shot with those long arms. Hey, he is tough. He is tough all over the floor. Foul in the backcourt on the steal attempt. This crowd, in the estimation of Tom Davis, is a polite crowd, but I don't see that today. Well, he, I don't know if he appreciates that quietness of the crowd, Gary. Wow, the Wildcats, long day today, 150 to 95. I don't, I don't see that at all. Where, where do you see that? <laughs> well, these Kentucky guys, they never admit it. 32-26 the count as Lynch will go to the line. 
He has three points. He's three of four from the strike. As I said, neither team are good at the free throw line. Iowa in the zone, and they're trying to control North Carolina on that inside. They're really collapsing when that ball goes inside. That's, and that's a key for them. Denny out to Fox. Rodel, Henrik Rodel out of West Germany, followed by Chilka, and Gibson comes down with it. Gibson is really giving them strength under the basket. He is very aggressive on the board. Brian Garner hustles it up the floor. Thompson tries to change the shot, and it's going to be up of North Carolina, a foul instead against the Tar Heels. Boy, what effort that time by Ray Thompson. Dean Smith in his 29th year as head coach of the Tar Heels. Harry, I was just going to say that. What what an effort this team gives. I, I just have to repeat that same word because that, that's what makes them what they are. They just pull, scratch, reach for that ball, slapping at it, going to the boards. They're a great rebounding ball club. A lot of people felt this team and really struggled the loss of the trio, but the effort has overcome a lot of things. At the free throw line, Iowa was 0 of 3 before that shot. You know, to out-rebound your opponents by over 13 rebounds a game is an evidence of that hustle and aggressiveness that Coach Tom Davis has put into this ball. Well, they've led the nation two of the last three years in rebounding margin. Thompson reloads it. Gibson out of Bull Bills, North Dakota, rejected that time. Kevin Madden's got it. Carolina, if they lose today, go 4-4. Four and four. First time in the history of Dean Smith's tenure. And that's rejected. Tux brings it out now to Garner. Garner's super quick. Up to Moses. Three-pointer. Biggest lead of the game, and there's Rodel at the other end, scoring for UNC. Carolina will push that ball at you, inline to inline. Thompson, and that's going to be a push-off inside against Moses of Iowa. Rodel, the guy that was fouled, there he is. He played as a sophomore in Chapel Hill, then went back to West Germany. A pre-med student, his dad also is a transfer student, and is a professor in West Germany. So Rodel will go to the line, the push-off by Moses. And on Moses, by the way, is his third foul, as A.C. Earl now will check in for the Hawkeyes. This guy was redshirted last year. He leads the team in block shots. Tubbs was out most of last year with a severe knee injury. So at 3.55 of this first half, Iowa with a 36-28 lead. They led early only to see Carolina get back within one, and now they have gotten back to somewhat of an advantage in this game. Now, Tom Davis is pleading something. We have three officials in this game, all of whom are from the ACC, and I'm not sure what the discussion's all about. He's calling Dean Smith up so they can have a conference here. Chapel Hill, the long guy got sent to the foul line. Horton was fouled, and Marble hit the free throw that won the game. Well, you've got flip-flop crews here. You've got ACC calling this game last year with Big 8 officials. I don't know if that means anything. Here. <laughs> what are you inferring? Uh, well, uh, being on the coach's side, Gary, I think things go wrong sometimes. Garner able to retrieve it. Up it goes inside, and a stop by Jackson, and he's fouled. the 1989-90 Jepson right yes, there, Jerry. A new addition. Unusual pressure right here. And Moses takes it in. And look at this power move by Jepson. He draws the foul, continues with good strength right on through to get that basket. 
He's Cole. much stronger than he was last year. Bo Bills, North Dakota, that's on the Canadian border, population of 500. That's where he comes from. He has nine points. He has played so well. He had a career high 24 earlier this year. Iowa 39 28. James Moses' penetration causes Chilcutt to drop off and help opening the passing lane and causing him to have to go back and foul Les Jepson on the shot. And Jepson now with nine points, three rebounds in this game. And as Joby Hall mentioned, he's a new Jepson, the new model this year, playing with a lot more of authority. 39-28 in favor of the Hawkeyes. Three and a half minutes left in the first half. Check luck and Bill right here. What a hustler out here on the front of this press. Number 34, he really gives the effort. He's their utility man. He just does what they need. He was Mr. Basketball in Iowa out of Fort Dodge. He plays the point on this point drop, 1-2-2 zone. Two, two he goes all the way back in when the ball penetrates to the wing. And that's going to be a traveling call on Madden. Good defense. Turnovers. Giving the ball back to the Hawkeyes. And turnover-wise, that is number 11 against North Carolina. Gary, I know that that's three turnovers that Skinner has caused in there defensively. Trying to draw the charge is King Rice. No call. A.C. Earl trying to follow inside beautifully was Rodell Davis. And here comes Scott Williams to King Rice. Rice power move, and Skinner is called for the foul to the basketball count. Boy, Gary, that, that, that trail official called that foul. There's an official right under the basket. The back official calls the foul. Look at the guy under the basket right. He didn't touch oh, it. Man. He made a fake at it. The inside official let it go. The trail official was blocked out, called the foul. Well, and Skinner tried everything he could to avoid the he foul. He pulled his hand back, avoided the foul. That's a bad call. Very bad call. And Rice will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Now, here's what the problems King Rice had against. Georgetown 0 for 5 Madden was 1 for 9 from the field so they have nothing for the backcourt he has five points now today Dean Smith has a lot of confidence in King Rice he doesn't expect him to score he wasn't a big score in high school but uh, he does need to be the leader of this ball club Skinner finds Davis and is blocked by Rick Fox Fox was able to avert what looked like an easy stuff and now traveling against North Carolina and this so-called polite crowd is not polite right now. Well, Davis slid on the floor as he went to retrieve that ball. It was a good call. But, but right there, Gary, we saw the hustle that's evidence in this game. So Iowa gets it back after what looked like a sure basket inside. Here is Davis playing with a bad knee. Out to A.C. Earl. Two and a half minutes to go, first ten. Eight-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Jepson at seven foot, tries to pass Davis and hit the end line. It'll be North Carolina's ball. And now Thompson will come back in. And also Michael Ingram for Iowa, as well as Brian Garner. Three substitutions now for the Hawkeyes. Very offensively, you have to be careful taking the ball down the sideline, especially into the corner by, against North Carolina. They're going to trap you on the side. And that time they were very effective, even trapping uh, Jepson at seven feet. Up it comes to Hubert Davis, the nephew, by the way, of Walter Davis, the North Carolina great, now playing with the Denver Nuggets. Davis is an outstanding outside shooter, gives it to King Rice, that shot just not going for him. Ray Thompson off to Garner, Garner's so quick to looking, Bill. No foul, the basket counts. Two points for looking, Bill. Good movement on that fast break. Unselfish passing, quick passing, getting out, filling the lanes. That's what a fast break's all about. Ten-point lead now for the Hawkeyes. They're unbeaten 5-0. They win today. They will climb into the pole. Rejected that time beautifully. Three-point attempt is good. That is Hubert Davis. He's out of Burke, Virginia, a sophomore. Garner in midair in trouble, and it's deflected, and they save it. It'll be Iowa's ball. He was lucky, Gary. Yes, Got sir. into the air and looking for a place to pass that ball. Chilcutt comes back into the game, and now Rodell Davis comes in as looking Bill comes out. They're going to pass 40 substitutions in this game. I believe it. There was a roll pass. Of Ray Thompson following inside by Ingram, a transfer from the University of Missouri. 
43-34 now in favor of Iowa. Baseline, Kevin Matt powers it, and he's fouled by A.C. Earl. Coming up at halftime, you saw that Kansas score a while ago, 150 points. Well, the guy that's the architect of all of that, Roy Williams, the head coach of the Jayhawks, will be our halftime feature. And also, we'll have college basketball and college football scores. Hey, Gary, you're kidding me about that score. No, I'm not. 150? Wow. You know, Rick Pitino, you're talking about how hard his team has been playing. But today, they went to Allen Fieldhouse, and that's not an easy place to play. Well, the road takes its toll, fatigue-wise and he is short-handed, not much of a bench, and I'm, I'm sure they just wore down. Plus, Kansas is playing outstanding. Boy, they're 9-0. Unbelievable the way Kansas has come on this year. Now, Roy Williams at halftime will document some of that as to what's happened in Lawrence. 43-35 the score here as Madden misses the second. Williams tries to follow. The ball is going to be North Carolina's. Scott Williams, who played so well in the second half against Georgetown, ended up with 19 points and nine rebounds. Hit the deck that time. That's Sounds something the coach tough. doesn't like to see happen, Gary, is an offensive rebound on that free throw line. You've just got to box out. You're in perfect position to box out and control that defensive rebound. Substitution now coming in. Jay Webb has checked into the game, number 42. That was a three-point attempt inside. Push off by Scott Williams. Williams so much stronger. He's gained 12 pounds. Big, strong guy who Dean Smith told us today felt he would be an NBA forward rather than play the center spot. Well, Jay Williams and uh, Coach Tom Davis really teaches block out, and that was a perfect example of Jay getting the good position on Williams and drawing the foul. Second foul on Scott Williams. You see the time remaining. Iowa, one of the real surprises in the early part of this season, winning in Ames against Iowa State Thursday after trailing by 18 points early in the game and here today taking on the 17th right Tar Heels and leading. 43-35 and now Iowa is going to take some time off the clock. Carolina really coming out in the zone press. Half court trap. Skinner has had some trouble handling the ball. He had his pocket picked a couple of times Thursday. There's a foul by King Rice. Thompson put that dribble down right in front of him, almost lost it, but Rice got a piece of the arm. Dean Smith, nine straight years. His teams have been ranked in the top ten in the country as Jepson comes back in for Iowa. They felt that Jepson at some time or another would be a fine player, and he's arrived as here comes Jeff Denny now, the senior. He was a guy who used to attend Dean Smith's basketball camps when he was ten years old. He's out of rural hall, North Carolina. Now he's a three-point shooter, Gary, so Dean may try to get a three-pointer right here before halftime. One and one now for Thompson. Thompson, like Iowa, has trouble the free throw line, but he nails that one. Thompson, by the way, has had some problems this year. He was suspended for one game because of uh, public intoxication and also some uh, risk uh, absolutely not wanting to be arrested in the situation. So for one game, he was out has come back and since that time has played so well for this Iowa club. He has 16 points in this game. The trap. 22 seconds left now in this first half. 10-point lead for Iowa. Iowa right now matching up a little bit out of this 1-2-2. Uh, two, two. They're covering them outside. They don't want to give them that three-point shot. Fox tries to get it into Davis. Rejected inside. Yet another block. And that will end the first half. And Dean Smith team has its work cut out for it. They trail by 10 at the halfway point. And this crowd very much into the game. We'll return with more of ABC's College Basketball action between North Carolina and Iowa this message and a word from our ABC stations. Carver Hawkeye Arena, as you check the stats after the first half of play, the most alarming thing is the shooting percentages in this first half. Alarming if you're North Carolina. They shot only 36% from the field as opposed to Iowa's 51. Well, that's the big difference in this ball game so far, Gary. The other statistics are pretty even. It's not that much difference in the turnovers, the rebounds, the free throws, uh, three-point shots. The big difference is in that shooting percent. 
by North Carolina. Well, that shooting percent, part of that is due to the pressure. Well, they're playing great defense, especially inside, and that was one of the keys for Tom Davis's team was to was to keep North Carolina from getting that cheap basket inside. In that first half, A.C. Earl had four blocked shots. That's one off of his career high. He has 19 now for the year. So North Carolina will start Rodel in the second half. Henrik Rodel, who did not start the ball game, will open the second half. And checking Iowa, they're going to open with the same five. I tell you, fans, don't go away because a 10-point lead to Dean Smith doesn't mean a whole lot. They have the ability to come back in this ball game. They're going to come out scratching and hustling and matching Iowa's enthusiasm in this second half. The crowd really got into this first half. Tom Davis has talked about it. It hasn't been that boisterous a crowd, but it certainly was in the first 20 minutes of play. Here's Thompson at 16 in the first half. Rebound, Jepson, so he continues to be a force inside. Uh, Williams just caught his elbow there a minute ago, too. Moses had that one partially blocked. Ingram comes up with it. He'll try to get it underway, and he is fouled, and Scott Williams commits the foul. I tell you, fouling Ingram is not a bad idea, Gary. He's shooting 29.4% from that free throw line. And I, I don't know, but what I wouldn't put him on the line every time he catches that ball in the lane. Dean Smith, you just saw him 671 victories in those 29 years plus. Williams committing his third foul, by the way. So he is the second guy to get into foul trouble. Moses has three for Iowa, and he hits the free throw. See, you talked him into well, it. Well, that's reverse of what the announcers normally do. <laughs> well, we I'm, watched him in free throw practice yesterday. He wasn't hitting him, I'll tell you that. But he worked on him. He's one of three today. Nice rotation on the ball, but he doesn't get that one. He has 15 free throw coaches. <laughs> and all of them confusing. That's off the roll. Another turnover. And again, they really make you make the bad decisions. The Aaron passes. They won't go for the steal as much. It's just they'll crowd the lanes and make you throw the ball away. Well, that's, that's the psychology of a press. Not so much steal the ball, but make you make the mistake. And that's what Iowa's done very well. 46-35, three-pointer by Moses. Scott Williams breaks it out now to King Rice. It's nice to be at home and not hear that air ball jam yep. when you shoot one like this. Rodel doesn't get one to go, and Ingram rips it down. Here's Troy Skinner on the move. Nice pass to Thompson, who changed the shot. Oh, what a play. Hey, that's a highlight film play. 18 for the sophomore from Summit, Illinois. Wide open is King Rice. He just cannot buy a basket from outside. Ingram comes up with it. Did you see Moses deflect that rebound? There's a pass that gets away, and Thompson hustling. Let's go back now on that remarkable play by Ray Thompson. This will make a highlight film. Out in front on the break, calling for the ball. He really wants that ball. Double pump back to the reverse side. A lot of spin on that ball to get it in. He was third in the balloting his senior year for Mr. Basketball of Illinois. Second highest score in Iowa history for a freshman, second only to Roy Marble coming into this game. He had 357 points a year ago, and he's made it a 48-35 count. As Hubert Davis, number 40 now, has checked in for the Tar Heels. You know, Jepson takes the point on that press and guards the throwing man. Then he has to sprint back down court to get his position under the basket. That takes its toll. There's a batted ball by Ingram. Up it comes to Thompson to Ingram. Seven. Can he team point lead? Can Thompson pass the ball? Rice is fouled by Ingram, who hits the deck. His second foul. Let's go back to that last break down the floor. Ingram made the good play and got it out to Thompson and back over his head for the pass. And we said earlier, he not only can score inside and outside, but he can pass the ball. He sees the open man, and he delivers the pass. This is Matt Winstrom, a seven-foot freshman out of Texas, replacing Matt. Now, Winstrom slowed this year with a bad elbow injury. Now seeing more playing time. He was in briefly in the first half. King Rice just struggling with everything offensively. It's affected his game at the line as well, as now A.C. Earl comes in. Gibson will go out. The start of this half has been all Iowa. 
Dean Smith will probably want to change some strategy right here to see if he can break this run by Howard. He misses them both. And it's a 50-35 game. Thompson touch pass. Looking Bill couldn't get it up in time. Wisely brought it out. He would have had an assist if Looking Bill hadn't fumbled that pass just momentarily because he was open. Ingram posts up inside. Nice gift to A.C. Earl. Ingram inside, and Ingram is doing quite a job on the boards. A foul against North Carolina. Just great passing right here, Gary. Thompson on the great pass. The touch pass, the look inside. Ingram opened. He pinned his man well. Gave a hand to the baseline to show that passing lane to Thompson. And then the hustle on the board by Iowa. Just outstanding. Lynch committed the foul, his second. Earl tries to get it in. King Rice with a nice steal. And it's stolen back. Nope, out of bounds. And it's touched last by Williams. It'll be Iowa's ball. Do you get the feeling that Iowa just doesn't quit for any reason? Well, it happened Thursday. They got down by 18 to Iowa State. And with their pressure and their hustle, came back and won that one in Ames. Here's Moses having it stripped away. It'll be Iowa's ball. On paper, Iowa does not appear to have the kind of talent of a year ago, but you can't put energy and enthusiasm on paper. And this team is playing so hard. Well, they had they came into the season with a little bit of an underdog <laughs> attitude, especially since Bullard was injured and couldn't start this year. Matt and Bullard. They really felt that they uh, had an uphill climb. And I think that is very true. And right now, they're trying to win their sixth in as many outings as A.C. Earl has fouled. They are absolutely just hammering the ball inside and physically taking it to to North Carolina. There is Matt Bullard. He's a transfer from Colorado. He is out with the knee injury. They say four to six weeks. He's more optimistic about it. And what an outstanding outside shooter and passer he is. As Jepson comes back in, Ingram will sit down. That foul on Williams, by the way, was his fourth personal foul. Scott Williams as sending to the line A.C. Earl. This guy has been a surprise. He used to say he was kind of the team clown, always cutting up, never serious. All of a sudden, he's become a player, and he's gotten very serious about the game. Well, he's not taking a back seat to anyone in this game. He's right in there mixing it up every time down the floor. That foul, by the way. A lane violation, lane violation right there. That's what it was. And Earl gets another shot at it. That one will not count against his statistics. He's shooting 66%. Madden now comes back in the ball game. Earl out of Moline, Illinois. So he gets a reprieve and he makes it. 52-35. North Carolina needs to score. They have been held scoreless for a long length of time in this one. In it goes, and Lynch, a good ball movement, gets the easy one inside. 52-37. Baseline looking good. Williams has got to be careful, and the foul is going to go against, is it Williams or Lynch? It was Lynch. It's Lynch committing a foul. Both of them are right around him. Well, we're going to look at it right here. A good pump fake by looking, Bill. And there comes Madden. That's Lynch. That's Lynch. Yeah. Was he up in the air on that block? So Lynch committing his third personal foul, and at the line is looking, Bill. Gary, take a look at Jepson right here. If he hits his free throw, Iowa goes into their full court press. He really is hustling that baseline. But he may have caused that last basket in not getting back down the floor and covering underneath. Now we'll see the press. He really hustling in there. Look at him. Guarding that ball. Boy, now, that's all he's got to sprint back and get under the basket defensively. They travel with it. Madden traveled with the ball. against North Carolina, and the crowd is on their feet. They are standing and applauding this Iowa team. 54-37, Moses. That's an actual, it may have been a pass. They try that to A.C. Earl. That's a play, they, they pass it to Earl. They like the lob, and definitely Moses, he put no arch on that. He, he clotheslined that one into Earl. So that was a pass, not a shot. A.C. Earl turns around. Gibson keeps it alive. 
And Manton comes out of there with a three-on-one break. Gives it up to Fox. Garner tried to draw the charge right then, but it was a good no call. 54-39. Ray Thompson will get back in at the first opportunity as you sense maybe a little spurt here by North Carolina. Fox reaching in to Rice. And very quickly, Carolina has picked up two baskets on the breakaway. 54-41, 16 minutes left to the game. Carolina's been in this zone. We're matching up. A little different than uh, Iowa's zone in that they play the smaller man on the point. Scott Williams reaches in for the steal. He thought he was fouled. Up it comes to Lynch, and Lynch is fouled by Looking Bull. Tom Davis, who has his Ph.D. from Maryland, he did a dissertation on athletics in Colonial, Massachusetts, and Virginia. Dean Smith is trying to get his team fired up right now. They've, they've got to make a run right here. They're going to get back into this ball game. They're picking up their defensive pressure. They're getting the ball out a little quicker on the break, taking it hard to the basket. Joe, are you surprised that Scott Williams is staying in with four fouls? Uh, absolutely. I, I think he'll play him in spurts, though. I think he'll play him for a couple of minutes, take him out, rest him, get him back in. Uh, in, every, in every instance, he should avoid that foul. Oh, boy, it's tough the way he's been playing aggressively inside. He's playing with four. 54-41 in favor of Iowa. Troy Skinner has come back in. He's with the ball. 15 and a half minutes to go here from Carver Hawkeye Arena. Carolina just moved to the man-to-man. -man. They're going to try to put a little more pressure on here. Ingram loses the handle. And it's going to be Iowa's basketball. Chilcutt will check in for UNC. But right now, we're going to take a break. 15-24 to go. Iowa 54, North Carolina 41. Harbor Hawkeye Arena, Gary Bender, Joe B. Hall, as now North Carolina after trailing by 17 points, 54 to 37, cut it to 54-41. You sense they're starting to make a little bit of a push. Now Chilcutt has come into the ball game, replacing Williams, who sits down with four fouls. If Carolina can get a basket on this possession, it will indicate a comeback. Nice pass by Rice. Finding Madden on the baseline, and Skinner commits a foul. That was an excellent pass by King Rice. He had three men coming over to trap him at the midcourt line, and he found the man underneath the basket. Looked like Madden took a little time getting that shot off, and uh, Skinner did get back in there in time to uh, make contact. Kevin Madden will go to the line, shooting 67%. He has given this Carolina team outstanding all-around play. 6'6", 230-pound senior. He's their best jumper. There's the best vertical leap of anybody on this team. 54-43. And again, you sense a comeback in the making here. Well, that's six straight points by Carolina. And they're really out putting the pressure on Iowa right now. 15 minutes left to go in the game. There's a steal by King Rice. And he so made the switch right then. He didn't go in with his man. The Skinner cut to the basket. He came back and played the passing lane, which was a great move by King Rice. There was a steal attempt by Fox. Now A.C. Earl will come into the ball game. He has three fouls. Sitting down is Ingram. You wonder if Iowa... After all of that enthusiasm early, now losing a little of that intensity as Moses drives inside, and he is fouled by Chilka. They were playing so hard, and boy, that takes a lot out of you. And then you have maybe a little lapse, and now North Carolina trying to use that. Well, I, I think it's interesting that North Carolina has come out in the man-to-man -man and has gotten more aggressive defensively. That's picked them up, and their tempo is on the up upswing. James Moses out of Carson, California at the line. He is a 67% free throw shooter. You see what he has done thus far today. He has the ability to really stroke it well. 
even though his shooting percentage this year has been down, they say he just has to keep shooting because he has such a good shot. Well, Tom Davis has a lot of faith in him, and uh, he says he's a scorer, even though he hasn't been shooting a good percent. Jepson tries to foul over Chilcutt, and he's going to get the foul. Jepson, you see how determined he is. He is playing so hard, committing that foul. I'm that sure that second. any coach would want the postman to be aggressive like that. Tom Davis will take a foul now and then. Ten-point lead now for Iowa with 14-40. This is Hubert Davis who's checked back in. Rich Fox stolen by Moses. Two on one to Thompson. Thompson recovers. Spin move. He saved Moses on that one. Yes, he did. That behind the back would have driven Tom Davis crazy had it not been converted into a points. 20 points now for Thompson. That's going to be off of Carolina. Hey, Sierra got a hand on that one and created that turnover. Now Scott Williams has come back in, playing with four fouls, and also Kim and Madden has checked in. There's Scott. Remember, Gary, Dean Smith coached team at North Carolina has never been 4-4. Four and four. Fourteen minutes to go in the game. A.C. Earl off in the corner to Moses. Carolina back in the zone. She thought the man helped him earlier, but they've jumped back into the zone now. Well, they're changing their defenses, and they're good at that. And uh, Coach Davis thought that that would be a key, is how his team reacted to the different type. Blocked by Davis, but Thompson reloaded it. Out it comes to Hubert Davis, two on one. Oh. And the fans here thought he traveled, but there's no travel. It's a basket. There's 15,000 traveling calls right there, Gary. But guess who got the final call? The guys in the striped shirts. Back to a 10-point lead. Thompson, three-pointer. Nope, that was a pass. That was a pass, and Jennifer Earl again. Going to be North Carolina's ball. Here, here's the drive right here by Davis. As he picked up, picked up that pivot foot, Gary. That's not even an NBA extra step. Oh, well, it, it's kind of the international rule in here. That, 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 that right. falls two steps. That's right. You've been coaching over in Korea. You know right. that. Uh, Ten-point lead now for Iowa. 13 minutes to go in the game. Into Scott Williams. Powerful senior backs in. And he's fouled by Earl, and that is number four on A.C. Earl. He said that he was standing still with his arms up when that contact was made. Take a look right here. Here's Williams going after the loose ball. Coming back into Earl. Earl left his feet, and that's definitely a mistake defensively inside. So he, he's been as successful at blocking those shots. You can't blame him for going for it. He had four in the first half. He comes there's out a, now. There's a push up by Garden. And if that is on Williams, oh, he should have fouled. That's all for Scott Williams. He's fouled out of the game. Thirteen minutes to go, and they lose their big man in the middle. That was an important play and an unfortunate situation for North Carolina. And it looked like the garter thought he had fouled as he stepped away right here. As Williams came back into him, and that's where the referee called the foul. He goes out with four points, four rebounds, after having 19 points and nine rebounds Thursday night against Georgetown. From our angle, Garner had his hand on Williams' hip as he was falling backwards. But the referee saw it as a charge by Williams. So a guy who missed the season opener with an appendectomy was out two and a half weeks in practice. Doesn't get to play much today as he's fouled out with 13 minutes to go. Ten-point lead now for Iowa. Carolina back there. There's the same play that the King Rice stole that ball on the middle. And we have an intentional foul here, the crossing of the arm. So a two-shot foul as Ingram reached in to stop King Rice on the break up the floor. 
What a good, clever move by King Rice as he let his man go inside and loops back to play that passing lane on the forward coming out. And there's the grab right there by Ingram as he, as he grabbed him by the trunks. Good thing he had strong elastic in those trunks, Gary. But King Rice, whose game just isn't together right now, misses the first one. They're starting to call that a little more, Joe. At the start of the year, you didn't see that, but now the intentional foul seemingly now being whistled down more often. Well, that's the intent of the rule, and the official should call that intentional foul. So after this, they'll get the ball out of bounds as Rice gets the roll on the second shot. He has 10 points. A magic number right there, Gary. Carolina has cut it under double digits. Webb, who made that bad pass, has been taken out of the game now. And Rodell Davis, 15, comes in for him. Fox off to Madden. And Madden is fouled. The foul will go on Ingram. That's where Kevin Madden really likes to play, is downside on that baseline. Next Saturday on ABC Sports, we're going to have top senior tour stars team up with the best from the LPGA as we begin weekend coverage of the Mazda Champions live at 2 Eastern. That foul going on Ingram is his fourth. So he has four. Williams is fouled out of the ball game. Earl has four fouls. And Madden at the line. A lot of time left in this ball game with players with four fouls. It could be the big factor. Gibson is getting ready to check back in for Iowa. Madden hits them both and hitting the deck underneath is Lynch also looking though as Gibson comes in and checking out his Ingram with four fouls. Ingram gives that Iowa team some toughness. Uh, watch, watch Gibson fill a, a position here in handling the press. He set the screen right then. Nice shot by Garner, breaking the pressure. Thompson on the floor, tipped last by North Carolina. He saved that ball. He was trying to get it over to uh, a teammate, Luckinbill, on the other side, but it hit Chill Cut's knee. One out of bounds. Seven-point lead for Iowa. 12-21 left in the game. Luckinbill will inbound. Wait a minute. Look at these substitutions thus far. They're pretty equal, aren't they? I'm surprised. I thought Iowa was substituting more, but North Carolina has substituted two more thus far. I told you it may set a record today, Gary. Gibson, he's always a sure guy to inbounds to in a situation like that. Thompson with Madden guarding him. Here is Garner. Very, very quick. He is out of Milwaukee. He was a player of the year in Wisconsin his senior year. There's the trap on the sidelines. Reach inside by Lynch. Nice pass to Rice. Look at Bill is back. And Rice hits it. And all of a sudden now, we have a five-point game. Carolina is, is uh, gambling a little bit with the trap on this sideline. They're back this time in the zone, changing their defense after scoring that basket. Garner. Gibson. Kilcott comes down with it. Both shots were what we call short-armed, Gary, and that's, that's a sign of tension as Carolina is eating into this lead. Tension, maybe a little fatigue as Rice kicks it back out. 11-17 left in the game. Thompson will take it in, and he loses control, but Madden chases it down. I don't think he got a first down on that. <laughs> Baseline and they lose it. North Carolina never to get their offense going there. They were they were standing right there. They had no movement in their offense at a crucial time. This may be a little fatigue set. Time out. Five point lead. Dean Smith's team though has climbed right back into this one. After trailing by as many as 17, now down by five is North Carolina. And the way they're getting back is points off turnover. Well, no question in the second half, 13 for North Carolina and only three for Iowa. And King Rice got two of those, or four of those big points in making that switch between his man and the forward stepping out. They were extending their defense again as they came out, tried to trap in the backcourt. Chips into the ball game. 38 left in the game. They went right then uh, to a uh, box and one. Moses. 
James Moses, who started out shooting well, been quiet for a while, now has 10 points in the game. That's almost thrown away. Rick Fox able to control it. He's trapped in the backcourt, and he splits the defenders, and Jepson commits the foul. That's Jepson's his third. Jepson left his knee in there too long. And in that trap, you have to stay back far enough that you can move, but watch that left knee. And that's where he picks up the foul. Well, when you're seven foot, there's a lot of knee there. As he commits his third. Fox will go to the line. This is the guy that Dean Smith told us this morning feels is going to just suddenly blossom. He really loves this player. He thinks everything is there. It's just going to take a matter of time, and it's all going to explode for Rick Fox. Well, he's... Uh... He's got great hands, but he's had a little trouble with his passing. We saw him a while ago throw it away at the start of a break there. And uh, he just has to refine these passing to be a complete player. Eight points now for Rick Fox, 59-54 Iowa. We approach 10 minutes left. Moses again. Gibson comes down with it. And he is fouled inside. Jill Cut and Fox both in there trying to... They put the foul on Fox, but look at him pinched in here. Jill Cut and Fox both had him right there. Not much room for him to move. There it is right there. Really pressure. 34 is Lynch coming in from one side. Fox on the other. Jill Cut underneath. This Carolina's really collapsing on that board. Fox. Given the foul, Gibson hits the free throw. Here is a guy who has a great work ethic, and you can see it as he plays this game. Plays so hard. His confidence level is up. And he's the player who now has become a big factor in this Iowa program. Last year, there were times that they thought that it was not going to happen, but it has as he hits both free throws. As now, Rodell Davis checks in for the Hawkeyes. Thompson will sit down. 10.05 to go, 61-54, Iowa. Jepson hustles on the man out of bounds, steps in, makes a trap. Now he's back down court defensively. Lynch kicks it off to Matt. Nice pass to Fox. He changes the shot. The basket will count, and he's fouled by Rodell Davis. A good double pump by Fox in getting the basket and drawing a foul. He's very strong, Gary. Not an easy man to foul inside and stop him from getting the basket. He just goes up with a lot of power, double pumped and got it on the weak side. He weighs 235 pounds as he completes a three-point play and all of a sudden a four-point game. Born in Canada, raised in the Bahamas. Played high school ball in Indiana. Boy, Gibson needed all of his seven-foot frame to come down with that one and he's fouled. That ball almost thrown away as committing the foul was going to be Madden. Fox, Fox, Fox is guilty of the foul, but Gibson will go to the line once again as here comes Garner back in, and Skinner will check out. Looking Bill will come back in for Iowa, and A.C. Earl will leave. I'm not going to say anything about the nice release Gibson has on this free throw <laughs> and the fine arch that he puts on the ball, Gary. But we'll just take a look. After hitting his last two, he misses the front end of that one, and it's 61-57. The cut comes up and breaks the trap. Nine twenty-eight left in the game. Four-point lead for Iowa. Rodell Davis almost came up with it. Looking for hustles, and it's going to be off of Iowa. North Carolina's ball as Ingram will come back into the lineup now for Iowa. Jepson will get a breather. And Moses just about caused that turnover right then. As he was really digging inside, got a hand on that ball. Now Ingram comes in with four fouls. Thompson comes back in now and leaving is Moses. Now Dean Smith's going to look for a little bit more patience offensively here. You see how Rice backs the ball out. They want to get set and work for the good shot. Overhead pass, typical of the North Carolina Dean Smith coach team. Here's a foul inside. If that's on Ingram, he's fouled out of the game. Evidently, away from the ball, he was holding on. I believe it's Lynch. 
He's fouled out. That's his fifth foul. It was away from the ball on the baseline. Right here, he's got him. He's wrapped his arm around him and holding him. Certainly, he can't get away from that with that baseline official right there on the play. It's called the old wraparound. Well, it wasn't necessary right there. He was way away from the ball. I, I believe, Gary, that's a tired foul. Yeah, but he just come into the game. Or right? an old man foul. It's kind yeah. of the way I play. <laughs> A no-brainer, huh? <laughs> and anyway, Ingram fouls out, so both teams now have lost a player. Williams has fouled out for the Tar Heels and Ingram for Iowa. As Gibson, very brief break as he comes right back into the game. So Lynch, the recipient of the foul, will go to the line. leaves with seven points and 12 rebounds. Still a four-point lead for Iowa. Carolina still in the zone. Right now, they're matching up. Swinging around, using that bounce pad, so typical of a Tom Davis team. They bounce pass a lot. Hitting the deck inside was Garner. Thompson trying to move in, and he's fouled by Rice. This game is really being playing tough inside, Gary. Guys, when you get that ball inside, you better set yourself because there's a lot of knocking and banging going on. Hosting up Jepson. They're trying to keep him out of his favorite spot, keep him catching that ball low. Thompson has 20 points in this game, but Joe, 16 of those came in the first half. That's only his fifth point of the second half. He started him out well and has been relatively quiet in the second half. And now in the stretch drive, maybe he'll pick him up again. Well, he's that type of player that comes through in the uh, tough situation. Hits them both. Boy, I'm really impressed with Jepson. There's the long arms of Thompson again, batting it out of bounds. Tom Davis said he's never had anybody be more effective in that full court pressure than Ray Thompson. Well, he hustles. Jepson hustles. Really a hustling effort. Crowd on their feet again. Off it comes to Fox. A.C. Earl's going to have to lay off of him because he's in foul trouble, and he gets it done. Good job by Earl in not fouling on that play. Moses, tough three-pointer. He got it. What a tough shot by Moses, who's now fouled Kevin Madden. He Boy. has no conscience when it comes to shooting. Wow, he had people all over him. He's shooting 35%, and in this clutch situation, he's not afraid to put up the three-pointer. A big basket for Iowa. And then he goes down. I'm sure he was pumped up, charged up, and he made that foul. So Madden goes to the line. What was so significant about that play before? A.C. Earl playing with four fouls, pulled off the defensive gym and didn't foul out of the ball game. As now Rodel comes back in, Henrik Rodel and Fox will lead the game. 66-58, 8.14 to go. And Navy in the 90th meeting. The Beats Army. That's a mild upset. 1917. I'm Gary Bender along with Joe B. Hall. This is the Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. The ACC against the Big Ten. Second half of their doubleheader. As earlier today, you saw that overtime win. Michigan over Duke. Eight minutes to go here. Carolina did a good job tipping that, that uh, offensive rebound back to their guards. The chill cut. One, two, two zone here. Rice penetrates, Gibson intimidated it, followed by Lynch wasn't good. Here comes Moses. Moses to Garner. He's got no place to go. And it's going to be off of North Carolina. You're right. He had some giants above him, but he's able to get the ball batted away. As an end result, Iowa will have it when we come back. 7.40 left to go. Trying to get the ball up and away. What a tough situation. Well, you know what it feels like to be a trapped animal. Look at him. Look. He can't find a way out. But he got a way out because North Carolina touched it last, and Iowa gets it at the baseline area. That's, that's usually a leg bouncer, Jerry. <laughs> 
So Garner will set it up outside. Seven and a half minutes to go in the game. An eight-point lead for Iowa. They've led by as many as 17 in the second half. Carolina looking for the trap on the sideline. Davis drives through it and puts it up and got it. What a gutty move by Rodell Davis. Ten-point lead. First two points for Davis. Fox driving. Took it too hard to the basket. And away we're going to have a foul on Ray Thompson on the weak side. That's putting both teams into the one and one. Both teams with 17 fouls. Thompson committing the foul. Excellent offensive board position there by Lynch. And, and he shows that tendency a lot, Gary, for a freshman to find that good board position is just instinctively with him. As hard as Thompson's played, it's amazing that was only his first foul in the game. Well, he sure has played hard. He's worked hard in the in the press. He's worked hard on the board. Lynch now with the second free throw underway. And they cut it back to within eight. Using Garner a lot now in the second half after starting the ball game with Troy Skinner. They need his quickness. Here's Thompson, as we mentioned, he had 16 of his 21 points in the first half. Carolina in the man. I was showing some patience right here. Pass into Gibson. Chilcott tried to block it. He may have gotten a piece of it. He comes away with it. Chance to cut it to six. And it goes to Lynch. Blocked by Gibson. And a hell ball. And the ball will go to North Carolina. Dean Smith says Les Jepson went over his back as he's signaling to the official from the sideline. And he will get the ball anyway. Alternating held ball possession goes to North Carolina. Davis comes out now, and Moses comes back in. And now Hubert Davis will check back in for the heels. This North Carolina team battling the luggage. They lost their luggage, couldn't work out after that tough loss to Georgetown Thursday, and they played two pressure defenses back-to-back. -back. Well, that takes its toll, especially when you're on the road. The long trip that Carolina had out here, no chance to work in practice. Hobson picks up his second foul. Iowa was zoning the out-of-bounds. Thompson sensed the long pass and almost executed a steal there, but he got the risk. So Madden will go to the line. He has 12 points. He is 6 of 8 from the strike. And Gibson's there. 8-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Six and a half to go. Thompson wide open. They left him open, and he can't get it. Follows his own. It's like they forgot about him on that play. Well, no block out there. The shooter is the best rebounder on the floor, and he was not blocked out from the basket. Three-pointer by Davis, and Davidson is fouled by Gibson after the release of the ball. That's his fourth personal foul. Thompson on the baseline, puts up the short jumper. No one blocks out. Madden went for the ball instead of taking a good defensive position and left the baseline open for the jam. So Gibson will have to leave with his fourth foul. Coming in will be Jay Webb. Not only was it the fact they didn't block off, they left him open for the shot in the first well, place. Madden went for the ball. He should have slid to the baseline and cut him off defensively. There's Jay Webb, a freshman out of San Jose, who comes in to replace Gibson. So Gibson sits down with 6.14, and they'll await maybe another two minutes expiring on the clock, and they'll get him back in there if they can wait that long. They won't leave him out too long. Davis able to cash both of them in. An eight-point lead now for Iowa. Watch for Iowa to show a little patience here with uh, Webb and Earl both in the game right now. Moses, they trap him. He gets it out. You can't take that ball to the sideline deep against Carolina. They'll trap you every time. If they, want, if they want to eat a little fuck, they should keep it out front. Moses, rebound attempt by Webb, but Davis has it instead. Davis off to Fox. Oh, what a power move that was. He is fouled and hits the deck. Fox has a pass 
to the basket, and he takes a hook dunk right here and draws the foul by Thompson. Right on the wrist. Good call by the official. A great, strong drive by Fox, who, who is almost a tight end on the floor. That, by the way, is the third foul on Thompson. So after talking about no foul trouble, all of a sudden he's picked up two in a hurry. Two quick ones. Jepson set to come back in. Fox hitting the free throw. Coming into this game, Iowa shot 88 more free throws than their opponents. But in this game, North Carolina has been at the line seemingly the entire second half. Gary, you can understand why both teams zone. There's no way you can keep track of who your man is with these substitutions. 70-64 in favor of Iowa. Five and a half to go. Carolina in the 2-3 zone. Gibson is back in. They didn't leave him out long, did they? He's back in, playing with four fouls. I'm Gary Bender with Joe B. Hall. 5-17 to go from Carter Hawkeye Arena. It's a three-point attempt by Thompson. Out it comes to Rice. Carolina has the numbers. And blocked by Thompson. Chilcutt follows. Carolina got good pursuit then. And a follow man gets the basket. Boy, they stormed that one, didn't they? I don't know, that's kind of an interesting shot by Thompson. It's almost an afterthought when he put it up from outside. Four-point lead now for the Hawkeyes. Well, he is a good outside shooter, and he's got a lot of confidence. I, the thing that Iowa has to watch right here is they're trying to eat a little clock. That's obvious. But you have a tendency to get tentative, and you, you lose your flow, and you lose your momentum. They didn't lose it there. Thompson just took it on himself. Back to a six-point lead. 26 points for Ray Thompson. Both Earl and Gibson are playing with four fouls for Iowa. Three-pointer by Madden. Madden gets it back. Out to Fox. That'll be a two-point shot. Gibson comes away with it. Boy, what a job he has done. Home rebound by Gibson. Nine rebounds in the game. Moses will bring it back out with four to go, and that shot was intimidated. Both Gibson and Earl follow. That's his fifth, isn't it? Well, let's see who it's on. I think it's on North Carolina. The foul is on North Carolina. Coming up next, ABC World News Saturday, or your local news. So stay with us at the conclusion of this game. 3.58 left in this game as substitutions now coming in. Davis will come in. Lynch will check out. And here is Webb as Gibson will sit down. Luck and Bill in. Replaces uh, Earl. Chilcutt committed the foul a moment ago. His second as at the line goes Moses. Now Moses this year shooting 67%. Last year 58. He's really had trouble at the free throw line. He's one of two today. 13 points for the afternoon. Funny looking spin on the ball, but he got it. Got kind of a cross spin on that one. He got three bounces in the roll around. 73-66, Iowa. Tom Davis trying to get into the polls. If they would win this, the pollsters would have to take a lot of consideration about this Iowa team as Moses cans both of them back to a 74-66 lead. 3.58 left to go. 58 to go in this game. You see the possession arrow favors Iowa. Both teams have committed 17 fouls, so they're shooting free throws, and both coaches very wisely have saved their timeouts. Well, you notice that uh, Iowa, when they're shooting a free throw, Tom Davis will have a substitute at the bench, so it gives him time to set his press. Thompson. And here he's got Webb on the point of that press. That's because Jepson's on the bench right now, and with the four fouls, they want to bring him back a little later. Foul difficulty is really something. We've had two men foul out, and Iowa has three guys with four fouls, Jepson, Moses, and Earl. Hubert Davis got a line drive, that one, and Webb, the freshman with a big rebound. The tight zone by Iowa forcing North Carolina to shoot it from the outside. Troy Skinner, who hadn't played for a while, has come back in at the point guard off the looking bill. Hand to bam by North Carolina. Look for the double up. Gibson will come in at the first opportunities at the scorer's table. 
23 seconds on the shot clock as they milk some time now. Oh, Walt. Oh, no, it's a hold on Rick Fox. He forced, he caused uh, Thompson to walk by grabbing his hand right then when he tried to lay the dribble down. Here he makes a good pivot. Oh, oh, man. Gary, I believe I called it. That was the fourth foul on Rick Fox, and Thompson will go to the line. So the substitutions now. Gibson is coming to the ball game. Leaving the ball game is King Rice. So you have Lynch, Denny has checked in, Chilcutt, Madden, and Rick Fox as Thompson at the line. 26 points, 5 of 7 from the line. Well, we talked about Ray Thompson being the next big-time player at Iowa. It seemed to happen Thursday night in that 32-point performance against Iowa State, and he's now got two back-to-back big-time games. Well, he was a double-figure scorer last year as a freshman, and he's the second leading all-time freshman scorer for Iowa. Travel against North Carolina. When Fox gets that ball, he's thinking one thing, and that's taking it to the basket. And boy, does he do that with authority. That is the 21st turnover against the Tar Heels. Fox pointing to himself right here. I don't think uh, Dean Smith saw him. He went out of there. Is he tired? I wouldn't think so with three minutes to go. You saw the changes coming again. Here it comes into Gibson. Great inbounds guy to go to, isn't it, when he's that tall? Skinner has had some problems with the pressure, especially against Iowa State Thursday, but he gets it out. He doesn't have great speed, but he's smart. He's a good ball handler. He's a coach's son, played at Palmer, Iowa for his dad. Thompson starting to milk the clock. 2.45 left in the game. Carolina needs to double up. Here they come. Lynch giving chase outside. Skinner gets it off to Gibson. Gibson takes it to the basket. 13 points for the seven-footer. He's playing with so much more confidence. Fox three-point attempt. Gibson brings it down, and Iowa at 218 has a lead. Lynch with the foul. That is his fourth. Jepson's in the position here to break the double team as he pops up to relieve the pressure. He sees an opening. I don't think he would have done this last year, but he's got playing with a lot of confidence. Not only that, he was playing with four fouls. He had to have that in the back of his mind when he took that ball to the hole. But an excellent move offensively. Then he goes down to the other hand, caps it off with a, with a great defensive rebound. He has 12 rebounds and 13 points as Lynch checks out. He I don't being know. Jepson. I don't know how great a rebound could be, but that was an <laughs> important one, Jake. High arch on the ball, and Madden, good inside position, has the rebound. Here's Jeff Denny now. Carolina's going to have to start putting up some three-pointers. Well, Jepson talked him out of that shot. Denny tries one, and rebound by Thompson. Two minutes to go. One shot by Carolina. And there's a foul by Rick Fox, and he's fouled out of the game. struggling but they think that's just a matter of time as well don't you think that a player like him has to get his confidence as a starter first and then become the shooter well a guy stealing the ball from him that doesn't help your total game doesn't help your shooting game as well so this guy has always been an excellent shooter and as you can see it's not even going down at the free throw line for him. quickly Carolina gets the ball up the floor Three-point attempt, chill cut, timeout called by North Carolina. So Carolina asking for the timeout, 148 left in the game. Iowa leads it by eight. We'll be back. In their second meeting ever with North Carolina trying to sweep them after winning last year on Chapel Hill. 
and Iowa will certainly move into the rankings. They pull this one up. Well, Dean Smith is a master with the two-point, two-minute game, and uh, whether he elect to foul or go for the press, we'll see. Intimidation by Chilcutt, and Moses didn't get the shot to go. Carolina's got to get the quick shot and send everyone to the board. Hubert Davis is that three-pointer. They want in there is Kevin Madden from outside. Moses with the rebound. A minute 24 left, and they fouled him in the backcourt. And if that's on Lynch, it would be his fifth. Carolina has not hit that clutch shot down the stretch, nor have they gone to the board. It was Madden who committed the foul, not Lynch, so that's his first. Both of them around, but they gave it to Madden as now Denny comes in. Let's go back on this last play. Well, there it is right there to reach in. How could it not have been Lynch? I guess Madden got him first. Huh? Well, Madden got him from the front. Lynch got him from the back. <laughs> Maybe he'll shoot two one-and-ones down here, Gary. <laughs> Moses gets that one. This guy was a scoring machine in high school. He averaged over 34 points a game. Tremendous outside shooter, and he started him out well shooting from outside today and hits both of these. I'll tell you, he has good quickness for 6'4 and 205 pounds. He has 17 points in this game. 10-point lead now for the Hawkeyes. The trap in the backcourt. They finally get it off to Denny. Denny will take it to the hoop. And timeout. So North Carolina now has two timeouts remaining. We'll return with more of ABC's college basketball action between North Carolina and Iowa after this message and a word from our ABC stations. She sees through those eyes right now are very pleasing to Iowa fans. 79-71, Dean Smith in danger of going 4-4 four and four for the first time in his 29 years in North Carolina. And Tom Davis trying to make it two in a row over the heels. Well, Dean can stand it, Gary. What a great coach. 19 top 10 pole finishes. Well, they break that pressure, and Garner scores. Back to a 10-point lead. Garner with four points. Inside a minute, you see the time remaining. Lynch from outside. It's been a long road trip for these... North Carolina Tar Heels losing in East Rutherford and getting beat here today as that foul goes on Lynch. And that will be his fifth foul. Now they're going to say it's not on Lynch. It's number four that committed the foul. We take a look at it right here. And there, no question, leaning in right here. Well, they didn't call it on him, though. <laughs> I give up. I've had well, him fouled out we, twice. <laughs> we do the best that we can, Gary, with what we've got over That's here. That's twice I thought he's fouled out. What do I know? I give up. I always wanted to be an official anyway. Yeah. Anyway, Moses continues to hit those shots at the free throw line. He has 18 points for the day. Boy, the, no one's left here, have they? They're just standing around, enjoying every moment, soaking every moment of this in. A few Iowa people, fans. A few people have gone up the aisle, but they're standing at the top of the stairs to see the finish of this one. Chill cut from outside, three-pointer. He got it. And timeout in North Carolina with one remaining. He doesn't want any time. He just wants to stop the clock. So they will not take a big break. Instead, they will inbounds the ball and continue action. 39 seconds to go. Iowa will move to 6-0, and their next game will be December 18th against Drexel, and then you'll see them here on ABC against UNLV on December 23rd. Now, wait a minute. The official, Donahue, says we want a substitution coming in. That substitution is Kenny Harris, the freshman. Was going to call for a timeout. Dean Smith has put a small team in. It looked like all guards were in there at that time. Going for the steal. Iowa has three timeouts remaining with 38 seconds. Well, we talked about how much North Carolina had to replace. 
Also, Iowa. Iowa had lost the trio of Horton and Marble and, and B.J. Armstrong. North Carolina on the other hand with J.R. Reed, Steve Bucknall, and also Jeff Lebo. Looks like at this point, Iowa's made the better of adjustment of the two. Well, their adjustment has been through hustle, Gary. They're playing as hard as any ball club that you would ever see. And uh, Ray Thompson is a quality player. There's no question. They've got enough talent, but the thing that they really have going for them is the aggressive style their defense generating offense for them and their strong board work. They really go to the boards. And I, I couldn't complain about this crowd. I don't know what Tom Davis thinks of it. And yesterday in practice, he said it was a very sedate, quiet crowd, but they have been on their feet and really leading this, this club today. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, you'll see a special tennis event where four top American stars play not only to win money, but to keep from losing it. Andre Agassi, Jimmy Connors, Brad Gilbert, Aaron Crickstein, and the ITT States match tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific right here on ABC. They have a bank, and if they ace somebody, they get 500 points, so the guy gets aced, he loses $500. 83-74, an interesting format as we close this one out here with 30 seconds left. That'll make you work on your serve. Isn't it, though? And there now, I think, Lynch is fouled out of the game. Now, Gary, you've said this a third time. Now, you're going to stick by this. <laughs> so he does foul out. And we're not picking on this guy. I really like him. I saw him in the McDonald's All-American in Kansas City. Really going to be a quality player. He had 19 points against Georgetown Thursday and fouls out of this ball game with 27 seconds left. He had seven points and six rebounds. Well, it's not that much of a factor in this game, but uh, we looked at that Georgetown big game the other night, and he was outstanding. But that's the way freshmen go, Gary. Up one night, down the next. Not down today. He played a good, solid game. But congratulations on that foul out call. <laughs> Rodel now will come in for North Carolina's Looking Bill at the line. Looking Bill is their best free throw shooter. He just really nails it. He's 89% from the field this year. Last year shot 81% from the free throw line. Tom Davis has no one on the line. He's telling his players just don't foul. And Looking Bill is four for four today. Looking Bill typifies the hustle of this club. He's called a utility man by Tom Davis, and he really hustled. Chilka, three-pointer again. Rebound Thompson. Off it comes to Moses. And the foul in the backcourt by Hubert Davis. I want to tell you, Moses is no dummy, Gary. He knows that the guy with that ball is going to get fouled late in the game. And he didn't pass it off. He put the dribble down and waited for the foul. And they're starting to celebrate here in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Moses at the line, he has 19 points, which ties his career high. He got that against University of California, Santa Barbara earlier. And so that's a career high with that shot, 20 points. I'm always amazed at one statistic, North Carolina, Gary, and that's the seven NBA rookies of the year that they've had, starting with Billy Cunningham, Charlie Scott, Bob McAdoo, Bobby Jones, Walter Davis, Bill Ford, Michael Jordan. What a run of great players. And so now Tom Davis brings in some of the substitutions. The guys that don't get a lot of playing time, but they come in with 14 seconds to go. Special thanks to our statistician, George Hill, for his work today. So some of these guys that don't get to play very much get to say, I got to play against Dean Smith's team. That's right. And uh, they will remember this game for a long time. Really brings a young team together to have a win like this. I'm this sure Tom Davis will reap rewards of this game. That's Dale Reed out of Wyoming, and Iowa has won it. 87-74. And Tom Davis's team is unbeaten. They are 6-0 as they beat 17th-ranked North Carolina.
Iowa with an 87-74 victory over North Carolina, and Dr. Tom Davis is with us. And Tom, I don't know how you can have a team play any harder than the Iowa Hawkeyes are. I just, uh, it's just been a pleasure to be their coach. They just taken me for a ride. They've really worked awfully hard. I thought it was so interesting how you came back Thursday against Iowa State. Do you think it helped you confidence-wise today? It had to. You know, at the end of the game, we had five sophomores out there, and we just, uh, I just can't say enough about them. They've done a nice job. You know, you won last year in Chapel Hill, and you beat Dean Smith here. There's not a lot of people have beaten Dean Smith two up in two meetings. Well, uh, we were fortunate, and I think I congratulate Dean for the schedule he's playing. It's going to help him down the stretch. He's got a good ball club, and they're just going to get better and better. You know, Tom, it occurred to me, prior to this year, you never had a team not ranked in the top 20. You didn't get any rankings. Now they got to pay some attention to you after this win, don't you think? Well, here, I'd had teams not ranked, but Iowa won it since I've been here. We hadn't, but I thought we had better young players than what people gave us credit for. I thought this sophomore class is pretty good. We're getting some good play out of the freshmen, so I hope they can keep improving, too. You think about the trio that you lost in Armstrong and Horton and Marble. That's 64% of your offense. Yeah, and they were terrific, you know, and that's why we didn't mind that people didn't think we were going to be any good because we hadn't proven it yet. Uh, we did lose three terrific guys. You know, we were kidding you. Thursday night, you made 40 substitutions. I think you may have broken the record. <laughs> today. Well, it seemed warm in there to me. I don't, maybe just a game that was hot. Tom, enjoy it. I know we'll look forward to seeing you on ABC right. on the 23rd. I look forward to it. Thanks very much. Dr. Tom Davis, let's go to Joe B. Hey, Gary, I have with me Les Jepson. And Les, I need a chair right now very bad. Congratulations on a fine game. And what an improvement in your game from last year. Well, I just got to credit coaching staff. Uh, they do a great job and uh, help, help us in offseason and preseason. Uh, getting us ready to play for games like this. Uh, it's all up to them, and I think they just do, do a great job working with, our, with the kids and myself. What's the difference in this ball club this year and playing with those three great seniors last year? Well, I think just, we just make the extra pass on offense, and uh, we're a great uh, young group of kids, and we just try to work hard every game and just give 100%, and, uh, and we're, we're winning right now, and just, just got to keep it up, and uh, we're doing all right. Well, I know your hustle was tremendous last year, but it seems like that you all are playing with that underdog-type enthusiasm. Well, yeah, every, I think every game we've, we've come in as an underdog, and uh, right now we're 6-0, and oh, and uh, we pro proved, a lot of, proved a lot of doubters wrong, and hopefully just continue at this level and uh, win some more games. Well, you won't be another underdog much longer, Les, and best luck to you. You certainly made a lot of improvement. You're a great player. Back to Gary. Watch. Iowa's unbeaten as they are 87-74 victors over North Carolina. The sellout crowd enjoyed it. So for Joe B. Hall, this is Gary Bender saying so long from Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City.